This is an introduction of the Interacoustics Eclipse Advanced Two-Channel Clinical Auditory Evoke Potential System. We call it an advanced system, and there's good reason for that. Sometimes we call it the Eclipse Pro 2 because it is the second generation of Eclipse. Here's some of the advanced features. There is an EMG monitor option for uh, cervical vents. This way you can monitor just the amount of effort that the patient is applying when they are contracting their sternocleidomastoid muscles and make sure that you have equal effort for left and right. When you have that, the software also calculates the asymmetry ratio for VEMS. In ECOG, you not only have the amplitude ratio calculated for you, SPAP amplitude ratio, but you also have the area ratio, which increases the sensitivity of that test. Besides having clicks and tone bursts, the Eclipse also has broadband and narrowband CE chirps, and I'll show you in a few minutes the advantage of having those, especially for the clinics that are doing threshold testing, and uh, that includes frequency-specific threshold testing. The Eclipse also has a high-performance OAE option. I'll show you that, and a high-performance ASSR option. Those can always be added at a later date if you want. The next option is a speech stimulus option. I'll show you that at the end of this presentation. And that's especially good for doing uh, a CAEP test. CAEP is a, a cortical uh, auditory evoked potential test. This is the acquisition screen, the screen that we use when we're recording uh, stimulus. And um, let me just go over things for you, uh, and I think it will be it will be helpful. Uh, up here, this is up in the upper left hand corner, right there, is where we actually select the protocol. And there are protocols already in it for uh, 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 click ABRs, threshold ABRs, uh, neurological ABRs, uh, tone bursts, chirps. Uh, there's ECOGs and cervical vamps and OVAMPs. All of that is already in there. And of course, you can design your own. If in the middle of testing, you want to change something in the uh, protocol, then you can simply click right here uh, and you can temporarily change any aspect of the protocol that you want. Right here, we have a selection of curves A and B. Curves A and B are two responses that are collected simultaneously in the background of any waveform that you're acquiring. And so, once you acquire a waveform or even drawing the acquisition, you can just hit that icon and you can display the A and B waveforms. That means that most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you will not have to do repeat runs. I'll show you how that works. If you want to see the contralateral response, it's an icon right there. Uh, and of course, this is your selection for a split screen. This is this, the icon for uh, uh, saving the test and moving on. If you wanted to see a previous session, if you had a previous session on that same patient, you can immediately view it by just clicking right there. Even if there were several sessions, you can bring them right onto the acquisition screen just to observe them um, so you'd be able to use them to make decisions. Right here, we have a way of changing the stimulus rate. Okay, you can have a number of rates that you commonly use that you might change. You might have 11.1, uh, 21.1, 37.1, 77.1. Whatever you have, you want will be there. You just drop down and you can make an immediate change of rep rate without going to the protocol changes. And if you're doing frequency specific work right here, you can have your uh, stimulus change. You know, so you can do like 500, 1,000. Uh, 2,000 and 4,000 uh, on, on the same screen. 
Okay. So moving over to this column right here on the left, you see we have all the information. We know the level, we know the type of stimulus, we know whether the masking is on, uh, and we can easily turn that on uh, in the protocol. And we know what ear is selected, what type of transducer we're using, insert phone in this case, we know what the rep rate is, we know uh, we even know the filter settings. So if we want to go and change any of that, we can. Right here in this column, we would be selecting the uh, intensity just by checking it. And if it's an intensity other than what's listed, then we can just go right here and we can um, uh, add, we can select any other intensity. These are just the most common ones. You could change those even. This is where we would select left or right or simultaneous. And uh, of course, here's a start button for starting the test. If you're in the middle of the test and you need to pause, there's a pause. Uh, and if you want to run some automated test, you could even say next frequency. And if you had uh, next intensity, and uh, if you had several intensities checked, it would run the next one. I don't typically use that. Here's where you would see your responses for the uh, uh, left ear, here's where you would see your responses for the right ear. Uh, right up here, you would see your left and right uh, raw EEG. And then up here plotted would be two things. It would be pl plotting the FMP. In other words, what's the likelihood that a response exists? And that would be as you're recording averaging, that would go up when it reaches 100%. This bar turns green, there's a check mark right there um, and uh, you know you can stop this one also at the same time records the background noise level and when it gets low enough where it's below 40 uh, microvolts then uh, you get a, a check mark on that side uh, so those are two ways to uh, help you evaluate how the response is is performing and then Back here, over here in the left, there is a bar graph that is displayed, and that is the reproducibility of A and B that are being collected in the background of the waveform that you see, that, of course, which is the average of A and B. Uh, and once that gets up to 70, then you know that A and B have repeated very well, and you can, you can uh, conclude the test. So it's a very nice, comprehensive, easy-to-use uh, acquisition screen. Here we have the, um, the analysis screen or the edit screen. We can analyze waveforms while we collect them. And uh, uh, over here is where you would select uh, your marks. You want to mark one, three, five, or anything like that. Uh, and of course, once you mark them, it displays right there the uh, uh, latency and the amplitude even, OK? Um, and here's your interwave latencies would be uh, displayed. And um, here uh, you have uh, uh, achieved a very low noise level. You see, I have a green check mark there. Uh, of course, here's your ongoing EEG. You can mark the waves while they're acquiring and everything. You can adjust right here uh, the scaling or the just the way they look amplitude wise on the uh, on the display and right here you can change the time base if you were recording them at 15 milliseconds for example and you wanted to see them in a 10 millisecond window you can just change that here's another really cool thing you can do some after the fact filtering uh, let's say you had the filters pretty broad, wide and wanted to uh, make them more narrow well you can do that even after the fact all right, so it's, it's post-averaging uh, filtering. Excellent way of analyzing waveforms. Here's an AVR that I just did on myself. You can see 90, 70, 50, 30, 20 dB ran. I ran two responses at 20 dB. 
And here I'm using some of the features. Uh, for example, I ran my left ear as I described. When I got to my right ear, I ran at 90 dB uh, waveform. And then I ran a 70 dB waveform. And you might wonder, where should I mark this 70 dB waveform? And most of you would mark it right there. Uh, but if you wanted to make sure, you could call up this uh, norm. So here's just norms that you can uh, you can have displayed while you're acquiring the waveform and, and marking it maybe at the same time, and that would give you confidence that you were correct in marketing it, marking it there. Here I called up A and B, as you can see right here. I called up A and B uh, to see if that waveform at 70 dB had replicated, and I moved those and superimposed them. I just click and drag on them, and, uh, and I could see that this uh, replicates perfectly without running a replication run. And then I can get rid of those if I want, or I can keep them. Another feature that I told you it had is the CE chirp. The CE chirp, C just means Klaus Elderbing. He's the developer of it. It's the only really good one that is known to work and has peer-reviewed papers, dozens of them, all of that. Rest are just attempts at a a chirp. Anyway, typically what does a chirp do for you? Well, look at this. Here's a tone burst of 2K over on this side, and uh, you can see its amplitude. And here we used a 2K narrow band chirp. It's narrow, narrow band enough. It's, it's narrow enough to be frequency specific, certainly as frequency specific as a tone burst is, but you notice that it has uh, usually twice and sometimes more the amplitude. So it's you get a uh, a response faster, and it's not only is it faster, but it is a, a higher amplitude. So within less averages, you can pick out exactly where wave five is and proceed to the next intensity. Here I did some on myself. I did a broadband chirp here from 90 down to 20. And look at this at 20 dB. Look how nice and well formed that is. And if I looked for at my AB for repeatability, it's right on superimposed. Here's a 4,000 hertz narrowband CE chirp. Again, look at this. This is a 40 dB. And look at that beautiful wave five. Um, you wouldn't get it from a tone burst. We are at 2,000. And again, look at the, uh, the morphology. Here's a 20 dB, 2,000 hertz. And look at that beautiful wave five morphology. And this isn't 2,000 stimuli. A lot of times this is five, 700, maybe 900 at the most stimuli at very fast rates, like uh, around 37.1. And I've done a lot of um, ECOGs with this. Electrocochleography runs perfectly. And as I said before, uh, you can not only calculate the uh, SP, AP amplitude ratio, but you can also calculate the area ratio, which makes the test more sensitive. These are just some that I did on myself, uh, on my right ear and my left ear, and you can see how good it is while I'm just sitting there. Sometimes I'm having a conversation with somebody while I'm doing this, but I have a clear summing potential and action potential. And I even have a little bit of high frequency sensorial hearing loss, believe it or not. Here's a cervical vent that I did on myself, and I simply marked P1 and N1 on both right and left side. And then the, the system uh, naturally displayed the amplitudes of both of them and latencies as well. And then it calculated right there the asymmetry ratio for me. And you know that an asymmetry ratio that is lower than 0.35 is considered normal. Here's an OVAMP that I collected on myself, best OVAMP I ever saw, because I'm able to do some filtering and make it look textbook if I want. And I marked uh, N1 and P1 on both sides and did replications to make sure that I had a legitimate response. And then the system calculated everything for me. Uh, you can see here is the latency on one side, the latency on the other side, 
and then you can see the the amplitude in microvolts on one side versus the other side and here is the asymmetry ratio right well within normal best OVAMPs that I've ever seen and remember I told you that it had uh, what we call high performance OAE you can get TEOAE or DPOAE this is just a sample of what the DPOAE looks like most people are really amazed at how fast and how noise immune this is because speed and noise immunity equals performance right and it's really excellent and look at what's displayed for you here you have the noise level right and of course here are the uh, emission levels plotted nicely there that green check mark means that it was uh, of the proper amplitude and signal to noise ratio range then I got all the numbers over here right here's the frequencies that were tested here's the level of the emission here's the level of the noise here's the signal to noise ratio and you even have a probability score that you actually have uh, a uh, that you that you that you have a, a a good recording a good representation of the emission and the noise level right all these check marks mean they're within normal uh, so this is makes a beautiful report and it's really really high performance it's a it's a great option to have on your evoke potential equipment and finally I wanted to tell you about the cortical auditory evoke potential testing this is an option and in this option you actually get speech stimulus and you get a little speaker with it here's the little speaker all right so you do this test in sound field and it's very good for pediatrics to see if they are hearing through a hearing aid that is or a cochlear implant that's uh, that's uh, installed on the patient and this is done in sound field and it's a cortical response so it's not just hearing to the brain stem level this is uh, at the cortical level here's what the responses look like there they are for three speech stimulus at uh, conversational speech 65 db you can see uh, we normally do it at a soft speech around 55 average speech 65 loud speech 75 uh, and make sure that a response is present that the patient is actually getting cortical hearing responses we know for sure that they hear when they can't respond um, to a behavioral test and what are the stimulus well there is a low frequency mid frequency and high frequency they typically use a ga ta and ma stimulus and so that is becoming very popular with pediatric hearing aid and cochlear implant fittings so I hope that gives you a good idea of uh, the interacoustics Eclipse Pro 2 advanced AEP system uh, to me to me it's it's my favorite system uh, because it really gives you the flexibility to do absolutely anything you want and to do it very efficiently.